way through a little bit about commissioning the new EnviroSun closed circuit system. What we have here is a 300 litre closed circuit tank with uh, five square metres of our black chrome selective surface collectors. The tank has a standard 300 litre potable water cylinder in it, but around the outside of the main pressure vessel there is a mantle which we use to circulate the fluid from the collectors and to heat the water in the potable water. Because the that closed circuit system has heat transfer fluid or a glycol, uh, propylene glycol in it, we can't have that mixing with the main potable water. So we're going to show you a little bit about how we put that together, how we commission it, and we're even going to show you today what's underneath all this case and what's in the insulation and the stuff that you never see normally out in the field. It would be, I think, a little bit more uh, intuitive towards what we're trying to get you to do. This is the cylinder we spoke about, which is inside the insulated case, which is cased with a colour bond steel case and then uh, insulated with a high density polyurethane insulation for a reduction of heat loss. The main part of the cylinder is a triple four, 300 litre, 700 kPa pressure vessel. This has been designed around most applications here in Australia and overseas where we sell this product. And we're going to then show you a little bit more about the closed circuit system that we've connected to this tank. The um, jacket or the mantle is a cylinder which is welded around the full circumference of the main potable water cylinder. And this is used for the connection to the collectors which has the heat transfer fluid passing through it. This is a, a jacket ring here and it's about three mil off the main potable water cylinder. Anything that comes in contact with the potable water is a triple four or three one six. The main cylinder is all three, uh, triple four. Any some of the pipes which we have to turn is three one six. The main heat transfer process works through this jacket, which is four four one stainless steel, uh, which is welded onto the triple four potable water cylinder. There's a lot of pipe work here and um, it may look a little bit confusing now but obviously once we case this whole uh, cylinder you'll see that each of the components is separately marked for you. But starting from the bottom and working through, this bottom uh, pipe here is connected to the collectors which has the heat transfer fluid passing through it. This is the cold connection side to the collector. Below, above that is then the hot, uh, the cold potable water connection which is straight to the mains pressure. Uh, obviously the element, the electrics, thermostat, mounting equipment and, uh, and all the necessary components to uh, uh, boost the solar water heater. This top one here is the hot outlet of potable water and on this side here is the pressure temperature relief valve connection. One of the things you'll notice with our tanks is that we have a separate pressure temperature relief valve discharge connection component as opposed to its main hot water outlet. This stops nuisance uh, discharge in summer months when you take water out of the tank and hot water flushes through the lines and hits the uh, wax stem of the PTR valve. Above this is our jacket venting valve. This is used to um, ensure that the pressure in the uh, mantle or the jacket from the heat exchanger is always maintained at a constant pressure and no more than 100 kPa maximum. At this end of the tail end of the tank we have um, connection which again is for the closed circuit heat, ex heat exchange connection to the collector. This is the hot side now. Valve. This um, is used in the open circuit uh, tanks where we connect directly to the collectors. For your application you'll plug this off. We provide that in the parts kits. This component here you won't be uh, needing to get into. It's just purely, purely used for manufacturing purposes for the passivation and pickling of the tanks after welding. And the dome, which is welded onto the main body of the potable water cylinder, is this here. So we'll just show you a little bit about what's inside it. Again, you can't or normally won't get into this. As we said earlier, this is the cold connection. This is for the potable water. The hot connection for the potable water and the pressure temperature relief valve and, of course, the element area. What we've got inside it, of course, is the magic that uh, helps the uh, product pr deliver the hot water. Is a hot water scoop which is uh, to ensure that we always draw from the hottest part of the tank which is right here at the top. Uh, the pressure temperature relief valve is just a little bit below that but that senses all the, the temperature of the tank and also the pressure of the tank and of course the water spreader which provides when the cold water comes in at pressure it diffuses the water into the tank without 
a lot of turbulation and mixing, which is what we don't want. We've got a very short distance between the top and the bottom here, so we want to make sure that we stratify our water really well and that we don't have it mixed up. This way you always get a very good draw off of water over a long period of time during both winter and summer. Every solar water heater uh, in Australia has an uh, electric, uh, electric element which is located in the middle of the tank, so we just boost the top half of the cylinder. So this is a 300 litre cylinder, so we're boosting about 150 litres. The element is uh, connected through this full bolt hole arrangement. They're a standard element uh, used by uh, just about all manufacturers. We spec ours as the highest grade ink alloy. Ink alloy is another stainless steel material. It's, it's best at an 825 ink alloy material. Highly spec, uh, uh, very good for hard water areas. Above this is a thermostat. Now this thermostat measures the tank temperature and it uh, it's, sits nicely under these couple of clips onto this flat that we've pressed into the end of the dome. Um, as you can see in there, we've got a couple of pods at the, at the back of it and they're measuring the temperature in the tank. One of them is designed for over temperature application. Now in solar water heating, uh, you can often get in summer very high temperatures up around 80 or 90 degrees. Although this is designed to trip in the event that it gets above 82 degrees, it will only trip and permanently uh, disable the electric sub-circuit to the element if the element has power connected to it in the first place. So for those times of the year uh, after summer when um, it starts to get um, uh, wet again, you won't have the problem with people having to get onto the roof and reset the, um, the over temperature cutout device. Uh, this has been around for some years now, but all our tanks have this as standard and it's a part of the standards requirement that we have to um, uh, have this included. Uh, we have that then connected to a uh, little terminal block where the 240 volts uh, is connected to it, uh, active and neutral, and the earth, earth studs just below it. In the event that that earth stud, for whatever reason, is ever uh, broken, it's, um, it's welded onto there. We have a, a, another hole on the side of it here that you can always put a bolt through and just connect an earth connection to it as well. This is all enclosed in a weatherproof enclosure for IP rating so that we don't have any uh, weather ingress or water ingress into the, into the electrics. Obviously it's a part of our IS2712 approval. So this has to be independently uh, tested to ensure that we don't have weather ingress into it uh, or water ingress into it to ensure that there is uh, no um, uh, contact with the electrical sub-circuits in there as well by uh, uh, fingers or anybody else that could be working on it at the same you time. You have noticed um, when you're looking at the shots that we have this plastic or it's actually a polypropylene cradle and uh, the tank sits on this for production purposes. We need it up off the bottom of the case by this distance to allow insulation or the polyurethane insulation to flow underneath it. Uh, it's only used really for the purposes of, uh, of maintaining the uh, distance between the bottom of the tank and the, and the, uh, and the case. Uh, we don't need it afterwards, but given it's polypropylene and you don't have any metals in contact with metals, it provides better insulation, you don't have any uh, uh, heat bridges and uh, you don't have any corrosion at all at a later stage. Uh, so this little device, you have two of those in each of the tanks, but uh, it's just in there as something more that we put a little bit more detail to show the quality of the product we build. Mm -hmm.